Welcome to APHIS Celebrity Spotlight. I'm Nancy J. When you combine the directorial power of Ridley Scott with the star power of Russell Crowe and Leo DiCaprio, you get the highly anticipated espionage blockbuster Body of Lies. I sat down with all three to discuss how these big names play out on the big screen. It's more than than a war movie. I mean, this is a we're at a different level here with Body of Lies. Yes. How do you describe it? I describe it as being one of the great. I'm passionate about uh, spy films. And uh, going back, one of my favorite movies would be The Third Man. Oh, wow. And then most people go, "What's The Third Man?" If you haven't seen it, watch it. Okay. But then it would leap forward to the whole 60s period of the, uh, the Ipcris file, with Michael Caine started those movies off. Then you've got John the Carey kind of starting his thing with um, Spy that Came from the Cold. Then, so the spy films have, are always in our DNA as mm -hmm. cinema goes. And I think the story is everything. That's why this is a, this is a, a movie about procedure, process, and betrayal and abandonment and seduction and all those things would be described as being on one side that's not between you and the enemy it's not seduce it may be confusing and making the enemy paranoid but actually what I've just described is all on one side between these three characters who actually weave this stuff to get the job done because the target is over here and the target the target is incredibly important but it's how they get there is what the film's about what we're dealing with here is potentially a global war that requires constant diligence in order to suppress. Our allegedly unsophisticated enemy has realized that we are an easy target. Our world is a lot simpler to put to an end than you might think. Ed Hoffman is the head of the division, but he does not know enough until he steals it from the guy on the ground, and that's me. Rules of the day. The car gets immobilized, starts shooting. Nobody gets traded, everybody dies. Same as every day? You got it. We're here to protect you. You can't even protect yourselves. Have visual, we'll engage. Zooming in. Hey there, little buddy. Hang up the phone. Are you on the line? Yep. Listen, you are attracting attention. Now, I will handle this on my own. It's it. Six o'clock in the morning. Saving civilization, honey. You've got a whole new genre here with between you two guys. Yeah. I, uh, well, I'm Welcome uh, to the world of espionage. <laughs> I really, you know, I, this was one of those rare films that, that comes along that is, you know, has, doesn't have a political message, but ta certainly talks about something very topical and on on the forefront of uh, everyone's mind right now, but at the end of the day, it's such a great story that can stand on its own two legs. It could have been set in the French Revolution. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's this cat and mouse dilemma between these three characters and lies and deceit and information and misinformation. And it was just such a well-written piece of material. But what I loved about it, that as political as some of the themes are, I felt like uh, it didn't, it didn't tell people what to think or how to feel. It just sort of told the harsh realities of what's really going on as best we could within the realm of, of, of the world of the CIA. Russell, you were kind of like the puppet master. To a degree, yes. Ed's got a list of things he needs to achieve, and he doesn't really care how he gets about achieving them, as long as they get done. The ultimate multitasker, is that, I mean, because you were doing, you were had your Ridley, kids, your Ridley family. Ridley said to me at the, at the beginning, he sees Ed as a, which probably came from the stuff in the book. He saw Ed as an, an ex-football player with bad knees, but you could still see that he moved with a certain grace. And that grace leads to his feminine side, and his feminine side is actually the skill of a multitasker. And that's the, the sort of through-line connection of, of who Ed is in a, in a nutshell. You're working with a guy named Hani Salam. I have one rule, my dear. Never lie to me. All you gotta do is trust me. How the hell do you expect me to run an operation when you're running a side operation? Oops. What the hell else are you holding back from me? You do know we're at war, right? Our enemy. They do not want to negotiate. Russell like that, do you think? An ex-football player that's very feminine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>
definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks for that, mate. <laughs> Just like to say hi to all the troops. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get. But I mean, in terms of, a, does, is he kind of a multitasker? I mean, is this is this a man well, who does a lot of things? No, he. I mean, look. I mean, Russell. Ever since I worked with him, you know, when I was 18 years old, has been, you know the consummate professional taking his job extremely seriously and when people take their jobs that seriously it translates on screen and it's you know it's quite obvious and apparent that the guy knows what he's doing absolutely and of course Leo is very idealistic in this movie he has a conscience right. is that is that Leo? That just gets him into a lot of trouble doesn't it? <laughs> the way I, I, I describe this man is that when he was a kid he, he had a great heart and he was connected to his environment and fully aware of the things going around him. And quite often in this business, that gets worn down or changed, you know, and people turn inwards. Um, but he hasn't changed. Deadly attacks in Amsterdam, London and other European cities. I have to trust everyone I can right now. I will not be responsible for your safety. I know about you, buddy. I know you work for the agency. You're blown. If I'm blown, you should have sent a team. You didn't send a team, did you? Whatever. Arnie wanted to kill me. What are the chances you're playing both sides? I did what I had to do. You are too power hungry. Uh-huh. What's your point? I'm out. You walk out on me, you know what that means? What does that mean? It's a dangerous world out there, buddy. 